uppercut, uppercut, sonic boom! Well, hello there humans, welcome back to channel, I'm Bushkin. Today we're going to be talking about the Jaegeru and TDs that you can run as heavies. The Jaegeru is kind of an odd TD because it's so big, cumbersome and slow, yet for the longest time it had the biggest gun in the game. Uh, the Jaegeru's gun is a whopping 170mm gun and it tops out at 1200 high explosive damage, which is... Pretty hilarious to get a max roll for 1200. People just don't expect that from any other tank apart from the 183. Or at least a lot of people don't seem to expect that. It's also a TD that has a very good armor profile for side scraping. It's not perfect. And because it's a non-turreted TD, you would think that it has to sit at the back. And that can be a role that it fulfills. But it also is exceptionally good at going to the front line, which is particularly strong nowadays. Now, that might not make a lot of sense to you, but I want to talk you through a little theory I've got. Heavy tank players are relatively bad now. Uh, the game is in a weird space where a lot of the humans playing are just not good. And what happens is, particularly heavies, they, I mean, look at, there is a tank behind me coming out sideways. He is a tier 8 tank in a tier 10 game. Playing... He's coming out sideways in a fail platoon. Uh, I, I can't make it any clearer than this. This is exactly what I'm talking about. And this tank, the Jaegeru, gives you an opportunity to plug some of the holes while also playing the tank in the way that I think it really genuinely is meant to be played. The Jaegeru is a tank that is not exactly classified by its gun. It's classified by its armor profile. The, the tank has so much armor because you can really get the most out of it by moving forward and playing relatively aggressively with it. I will often play really aggressively with it because if you can make this a peekaboom tank that trades, um, you're trading an average alpha of 800 with your 170 millimeter with 299 millimeters of AP pen. Uh, you've got 380 millimeters of heat pen, like nearly 400 millimeters of pen and you're running 85 millimeters of HE pen. So you are running a lot of pen and your DPM is also nothing to scoff at. You're looking at a tank that has over 3k DPM with an 800 alpha shot. So this is a very, very scary tank up close and personal. And your HE splash with 1200 damage is really good. One of the things that you can do with this tank that a lot of people don't really understand is hit the rear decks of side scraping IS-4s and absolutely murder them. They will just get are trittered down in a very, very uncompromising fashion. The lower glacis, as always, is pretty massive, and, and that can be difficult. But you can angle the upper deck so that your weak cheeks on either side are very difficult to pen. Now, they're not impossible. and The heat pen on a lot of the Tier 10 tanks, the heavies these days, is very strong. And there's no getting around that. But the problem with the Jaegeru was you used to get penned through the cheeks by mediums very, very easily. Um, and after going on about the splash pen, I then hit the front of the tank and it just hits a module and does nothing. So there you go. <laughs> Good going, Bushka. Making things up again. Um, where was I? So what to do with the Jaegeru? Why isn't it super popular? Well, the most popular TD in tier 10 is the Griller. Uh, and this isn't a really odd one. The One of the most played tanks in T10 is the Grill. The other one is the 183. And that's because the Griller is perfect for the way people that don't know how to play the game play the game. They hide at the back. They vampire all the hit points from other tanks. And they run away really fast. Now, that... That's great, and I'm not saying that it's a bad tank at all. It's actually a really good tank. But it's also really played because it's that play style is just so indicative of people. <laughs> the most played tank really at the moment is still the Annihilator. And the Annihilator is the most played tank because it's just stupidly overpowered. 
that's not the case with the grill. Um, it's also not the case with the Jaegeru, but the Jaegeru isn't sexy. The Jaegeru is a big, slow, clumsy oaf with a massive right hand and a very, very strong but zero-sum armor profile. Like, once you get this thing maxed out on an angle, that's it. That's all there is to it. Oh, hello, grill. Yeah, that'll do it. There's nearly 1,200 with a little fire. Thanks very much for rolling through HE Town. And this is what this tank is so good for. You can take it front line. In fact, you should take it front line. There will be maps where it does well at the back. And look, anything with an 800 alpha gun will do well if you're sitting at the back firing unimpeded. But that's wasting the tank. There are other tanks that can do stupid stuff like that. Like the 183, right? Choo-choo, I say. I'm just having fun. Driving my Jaegeru. That's all that I'm doing. Just driving my Jaegeru, having fun. Popping, popping humans and having a good time. So what is the secret of this tank? Well, obviously you've got to know your angling. And by angling, I mean you've really got to angle this tank all the time so that your front drive wheel is basically jiggling and wiggling in a direct line with the tank that's shooting at you. And that means you've got to have a little bit of movement in the tank despite the fact that it's not particularly huge. The other thing that you have to really worry about with this tank is your angles. If you're going to push into the front line, then you have to have a really big, strong bit of hard cover next to you because it is probably the biggest target in the entire game from the site. Um, and as a non-turreted TD, that's accentuated in a huge way because, let's be honest, you can't just turn the turret like you can with a mouse or an E100 and angle the turret and, oh God, that is a very lucky Premier Proto uh, as we hit the iron girder that renders in just in front of us and starts shaking our fists at the screen. The turrets on those tanks can be angled separately to the turrets, to the actual chassis of the tank, which means the E100 and the mouse can uh, do all kinds of crazy things in their side scraping and their angling. The Jaegeru doesn't have that luxury, and neither should it. It is a genuinely fearsome tank. But, I mean, it's not an easy tank to take out. It is a tank that you want to make trades with. You're going to make trades with in a big, big way. You're going to have to really come at it very, very hard. And this is what I mean. Look at this, the angles on this tank. This is a big tank with some very poor angles. Um, and that's because I'm not in a good position. I'm backing into that corner so I can keep my right side free. There we go. And then I'm going to try and side scrape off this corner. And look at the angle. This is the angle I'm talking about now. I can't actually shoot him until I pull my tank back around. Let it go. Duff the shot. Rushed it. He rushed it. We pull back and we start working. And I'm using that little bush there as soft cover as well. This is what the Jaegeru does really well. While he's on a reload, we're going to move to a building over here where hopefully we can get a shot through. Nice. 700. Bit of a low roll. But whatever. AP doing its thing. I'm probably carrying way too much heat, to be honest, on this tank. Uh... It just doesn't need it. 300 millimeters of pen means you don't have to fire a lot of heat. Um, there is another Jaegeru up there. Great. I managed to thread the needle. He doesn't. Three all. Uh, pretty close game right now. Could go badly. Could go either way. But we're setting up on a nice little slot here. Now we've got a 92 E1 on our right. The E1 is hopefully going to be a, give me a little bit of cover. We've got a very low hit point waffle tractor up there. So I'm trying to get back this way and use this angle to get shots in down there on that yo. Because if I don't clear a target or put some big damage in soon, things are going to go very, very poorly. Here comes the E1. We hit the adrenaline because we have to hit this. Jaegeru has to come all the way around the corner to get this clear. We're hopeful of clearing him before he gets back around. That's why we went to adrenaline. And we do. So now it's a 1v2. It was briefly a 1v3, which means uh, Kolobanov's medal is on the cards. Uh, and here we go. Collab look, look, look. Jaegeru. Meet the yo. And now we're in a little bit of a tough time. Because this guy actually does have very good heat pen. And I have to hit him. I've got to stop him from getting around me. Doesn't matter what the case may be. Now, the thing is, though, he's a two-shot. I'm a two-shot. And I've got an awful lot of AP pen on this tank. There we go. 800 alpha damage. Just keeping him angled again. Look at the angle I'm giving him. 
Angle, angle, angle. 513 roll. That's a massive roll. He's very lucky there. And still, it's not enough to get me, and we get the clear. That's the Jaeger route. Hell of a tank. Don't be bashful with it. Stick it in people's faces and enjoy the results. I'm Bushka. Uh, not enough for a mastery there. Six and a half K, Kolobanov, but whatever. Um, look after yourself. Stay safe in the battlefield. And as always, bye for now. Au revoir. See you, team.